right, welcome back to another edition of Buck Junkies, fellas. Winding this season down. It's done. Snuck up on us and passed. It's here. This is the last week, last full week of deer season. Are you satisfied with your deer season? Oh, heck yeah. Yes. I had a great deer season. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, my season's real good if you want to go home hungry. You did, yours is just a repeat of last picky. year. I'm too picky. A repeat of last year. I think he triggers off his gun or something. I don't know. I don't know. We got to figure that out. Did we had to go get, sit with him. Did you get your lens situation figured out? Yeah, I got. I, I, I was full of 2020 when I went uh, Sunday afternoon. 2020. And he said all the deer were the same size then. Yeah. He said he had no little ones. <laughs> uh. Mikey, what about you? You satisfied? I'm satisfied. I've seen a you lot killed of another. You killed something else, didn't you? Yeah, I got another one. We'll have to get to that. We'll we had the that. unexpected. What, so it's your week, Mark. What are we talking about this week? We're going to kind of – we got a recap for last week. Talked about late season hunting. And I think this past weekend was a prime example of late season hunting. Um, and kind of kind of what we done. I know y'all moved cameras and, you know, stuff like that. And yep. we've seen a huge uptick in pictures after we moved the cameras. But – I guess one of the topics I wanted to cover is Michael shot a deer Friday, um, had to do a little tracking on it, and kind of wanted to just do a touch up and our tracking experience is what we learned this year. You got Sadie now, that's a black lab that is a machine when it comes to tracking. I am, I'm blown away what that dog does, and to she have likes finding them. I mean, no training. I mean, other than us just working with her, but no physical training dedicated to tracking. Oh, she's a, a total different dog than what she was a year ago. From yeah, just her body size and just the. The amount of energy he has, period. Yeah. Oh, she's ready to go. But no, we uh I think Jamie, you hunted mainly mornings, didn't you? And then we hunted the afternoons. Yeah, I've only got a chance to hunt two afternoons this year, really. Did you hunt a morning? I hadn't hunted a morning since before Christmas. Yeah. But but did you hunt a morning, Mikey? Or did you go afternoon? Uh this weekend? Yeah. Mm mm. No. no I you hunted, hunted Friday and then Saturday. I hunted Friday evening was we duck hunted yeah, Friday that's right. morning. That's right. Well, we're gonna talk about that too. Yeah. But no, I'll just kind of recap of what we've done last week as far as what we discussed on podcast, kind of going over late season hunting, how that kind of, in my opinion, played out to our favor this past weekend. We kind of took some of the things we talked about and executed them very well. Um, of course, we got to touch base with our wonderful wood duck hunt that yeah. was a blast, but <laughs> that's about it. Just kind of keeping us what's happening in the butt junkies world. What's happening in your world right now? <laughs> so last week we did, we got into the late season stuff and from my experiences, this time of year, deer kind of need three things if you think about it. The first, most most of the year they won't cover. They got to have water. They got to have food. Now that changes for bucks when they go looking for love, but primarily they're wanting that cover, food, and water. So this time of year, the food sources are about depleted. Yeah. You know, the acorns are gone. A lot of the stuff they're eating. So that's where when you've got green fields you've got some food on the ground like we you know worked hard all year to make sure we've got yeah food for them that's where you want to be um and two that's something else we've battled is we've had a lot of rain lately we've had not the best weather for green fields and they're just now coming back around you know but we've seen them more in the green fields in the evenings they're they're not touching them in the mornings hardly oh yeah no they're woods and acorns in the morning See, and that's or, where or what's that, left anyway that's what i wanted you to talk about jamie so you didn't really hunt the green fields when you were down this weekend you pretty much stuck to the woods didn't yeah you? yeah so what did, what did you notice about seeing them in the in the woods they i mean the one i seen would come up the edge of the food plot but they was feet and acorns that fallen right there in the wide open versus been the leaves but yeah they come on up through and just build around acorns the whole time they never they never walked out in the food plot and ate anything in the morning I hadn't been seeing anything in the mornings. Mm-hmm. It's all been, you know, late. And when I say late evening, you get in the stand at 2 o'clock, you might not see a deer till 5 o'clock. See, We've I, said multiple sun, Sunday it was probably 2.15, 2.30 when I got in, and I didn't see the first. I I'd heard nothing that was, like, totally dead till probably 4.30, 4.40, somewhere through there. But yeah, it was. You're right. It was nothing yeah. until almost dark. What I do notice, though, is – um, we're getting longer hunting times. Like yeah. it wasn't the sunset wasn't until like five twenty, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. It was late. So you could sit and stand till almost six o'clock, you know. It starts getting tough to see about five forty five, but you still got five more minutes right there. And it's you know, one of the things I I noticed when me and Jamie were hunting one day, it was, you know, the deer are really more cautious about slipping through the woods and, and what they're staying up against. You know, they're they're not just 
they're not just bailing out on a wide open field as easy as it was back, you know, several weeks ago. Oh, they've had three months to pattern us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they've done it. Oh, yeah, yeah they've definitely they have, done it. That's one have. thing you notice, too. If you're consistently putting pressure on your property, your stands, those deer's figured out. Where we were seeing them come from certain areas, you know, behind the ditch or coming the same trail always, they've totally switched that this time of year. They're coming from the thicker cover. Uh, they're coming in a different way, and they're not. And they're super like you, you talk about alert and looking at the stands and trying mm-hmm. to pick up something. They, I mean, they're smart this time of year. You, they, you know, they've been on edge all yeah. for three months. I think that's a huge benefit we have. Instead of having one large lump of property, having two separate properties, you know, and this we're only talking 300, 340 acres. I much rather have two hundred and fifty acre properties versus that one three forty because we're able to, you know, we hadn't pressured behind a house much, oh, and yeah, and it shows. It shows it was deer all over the place this weekend. Well, that's that's what I want to talk about your hunt there. So you went by the house to a, a stand a pond stand, which is like one of Jamie's favorite stands when he hunts, kind of the Jamie stand. Yeah. Smack what was it? Middle of what was it? So you walked out there. What time was that? Friday afternoon. It was about two. You left early. Yeah, yeah. two fifteen, two thirty. I was like, heck, you know, y'all were going to other property. I was like, I'll just walk. I was like, neither. It's nice out. Nobody been in the stand. That stand for. I hunted it once of this year. The only time I've hunted. That's I've been, only hunted it's it. It's probably once. been three three At weeks. Least. It's been three weeks. I know. And uh, the way the field set up is, you can walk to that stand, and once you get kind of on the same elevation, I guess you'd say, as the the food plot. You got enough cover, you know. We got all that sage grass, and I don't. It's the eco edge stuff. Yeah, we just left that eco edge. We didn't plant nothing there. That was I didn't just, plant nothing. I just left it growed up. And so I slipped up there, and I just happened to see a dark spot in the food plot. And I looked through binoculars, and it was covered up in does. I mean, it was probably anywhere from ten to twelve does out there feeding. And I knew there was no way I was going to get to that stand without just getting flat busted. Two hundred yards from you, yeah, like that? yeah. They were probably two hundred yards. <clears throat> um, so I got down and kind of hunkered down and eased up against that eco edge. And as dumb as it sounds, I got the old army crawl out and got close enough to where I could see the field. What you told me was you've been, what's, what's the game? What's that game? Uh, uh, I've been playing. So I'm not a gamer, but me and my wife got COVID back around Christmas. I went and bought an Xbox, got an Xbox delivered to the house, and I wasn't going to be bored for a week. And they had a game called Hunt Simulator on there. Yeah. It's harder than real freaking hunting. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I've been army crawling on this hunt simulator. I was like, heck, I'm supposed to put this to use. Like, I done learned this, you know. And it it panned so out. you got down on the belly. Got down on the belly, took my backpack off, eased up there. And I was about 150, 175 yards from where the deer were. There were some that feed it off to the edge where I couldn't see them. There was four or five that was in good sight, No, nothing between me and them. You know, no sage grass, no nothing like that. And I picked the biggest doe out, laid that old 350 legend across that backpack and how far was that shot? About 170, 175. Did you actually range it? I didn't range just... it. I just have ranged that field enough to know about where it was at because I could see when I shot that doe, I could see the camera in the background, and I was like, it was to the point to where I was scared. She was so close to the camera. If I shot and a bullet passed through her, I might hit the camera. Oh, know? really? <laughs> but she ended up walking off a little bit and dropped her. She never took another step. And heck, it wasn't 230. I mean, yeah. I – it was I got a text back. It was like we had sat in the stand. And you sent a text back with a dead doe. I was like, it ain't been twenty minutes. <laughs> oh, he busted up my squirrel hunt. Oh. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I wasn't even gonna go deer hunt. I didn't yeah. decide. I was like, I'm. I was sitting up at camp. Y'all had all left, and I opened my first beer, and I was like, I'm just gonna stay up here. <laughs> we'll get dinner ready, and I got to looking, and all those squirrels were behind the camp. And I said, well, I'm gonna slip down here. I'm gonna kill four or five squirrels. Them squirrels were raising cane when I got back to camp. And I, was, so I thought maybe we'd have some squirrel and dumplings or something the next day. I, yeah. I have them cleaned up and, you know, done before they get back. And I got down there and got set up. And before I even got set up real good, I heard Mark shoot, boom. It's like, surely not. <laughs> you think his gun went off kind of stand or something? <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't long. He was like, bring the golf cart. I mean, it, it was one of them things like I wasn't going to be able to get in the stand. And either I was going to bust the whole field up. And, I mean, it was enough deer out there if they would have broke up and ran – They'd have tore that whole side of the woods up. They wouldn't. It would have killed the rest of the day. Yeah, you so, may. I mean, maybe by bright at dark, you, you might have had something but, slipping through. But yeah. I mean, two thirty is as good as four thirty any day. Hey, hey, get it clean. And uh, but no, it was. I called Mikey and because I thought he was still gonna hunt. I said, man, just bring the golf cart, come get me. And I said, we'll load the deer up and I'll drop you off and I'll carry the deer back and you know get it dressed out and ready to go. And so we got Mikey set up on a, I guess. The dove field that's got all the, the dove field. So you got your deer back. You decided to go sit out. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, I went and picked him up. I grabbed him. It was like deer him. Uber for us, yeah. you know. We I called grabbed him. him. <laughs> yeah. So I showed up, picked up his deer, and picked him up. And I was like, well, darn. I'd already lo- loaded that chair up in the, the tripod the to, chair. to leave, you know, to go hunting. But I decided I wasn't going to go. And anyways, I walked back in, swapped guns, put the twenty two up, and grabbed the 350 le- your gun. Yeah, you took my 350 yeah, legend? your 350 legend. And I, I said, well, I'll just go get more. You know, I may see a doe on the way down through here in the mud hole field or something. I'll stop and shoot her. But anyways, I got all the marked, didn't see anything, and picked him up. And we loaded his deer up, and he was – I said, well, shoot, I'm just going to go over here and set. And, you know, it's kind of – it was about 3.30 or 3. It was three, three hours yeah. to hunt, or yeah, two hours said, anyway. Shoot, I got plenty of time. So we went over to the dove field right there at the – right at the tip end of the dove field, and uh, we throwed the bog chair out up against – this little thicket with some thorn trees and stuff, and Mark throws some sticks around me, and I set the tripod up. and Made you a bird's nest. I just sat there, yeah. <laughs> made me a bird nest. <clears throat> and I guess, I don't know. It was late. Yeah, I didn't shoot one till late. Now, I've seen deer before then, but it was it was some button heads and some smaller does came out, and I had some come up from downwind, I mean, that walked down the middle of the road and walked up on me and busted me. And uh, anyways, it, it got to be a... Kind of late, all those deer kind of ran off, and some more. Another big group came through, started filtering in. Well, one came out. I seen her, and I was like, "Well, that's you know, that's a pretty good sized doe there." And I shot her. She was what? How far? Was she? she was close to 180. It was it was it pretty was good a pretty little good stretch. stretch. Did you dial the scope, or did you just no? Wind it? <laughs> I just winded her. Yeah, where did it hit her? Oh, it plugged her in the bread. Yeah, basket. really. Mm-hmm. Did she run. Yeah. At first, I was wondering because those 350 legs when I was shooting on that open field, like I. I never, like, shot That's the first one. time you ever shot it. That's the first time I ever <laughs> shot it. So when I shot the gun, I mean, it was like a twenty two rifle. When it went off, it was just kind of like pop. And I was like, man, I, you know. <laughs> can't you do it? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I got a good bullet in this gun or not. You know, but it, anyway. Hey, they're light recoil, and it ain't, I mean, it ain't super loud. But she ran. She kind of made a little loop in the field and ran back down in the sage grass, and I watched her run off the field. And the tail was down, and I was like, well, I didn't knock her plumb down. You know, I said, well, maybe I missed her. You know, I may have. Kind of stretched that 350 a little far. But anyways, I called Mark, told him to bring me a light because my battery's about dead on my phone. I didn't bring no flashlight or nothing. So we went over and we didn't get in the grass very far, and it was – It was no trouble to try it. Sides. Was, there a tra- was there blood right oh, where you shot was, her? Yeah. I didn't in the walk field? in the green field. Oh, you just – No, went, no. I just, just went straight to where I knew where she went in the grass <clears> at. <throat> As soon as I took a few steps in there, it was blowing. Sage She's grass the big was, doe, though, because, you know, we had this doe contest going this year. <laughs> Mikey said Who could deal. kill the biggest one? And that it was 116, which that's a big doe for us. What did that one weigh? 130. 130. 130. 129. It was right just a few ounces under I think you done put some fishing weights off in so there. We got there. one more weekend to, to top I, that I got to scale up and see what I, yeah. I got to beat. <laughs> Jamie's going to show up with one slap. I'm, shooting, I'm going for 200. <laughs> So that was that was what made Friday to me a blast because I had my deer dressed. It was already in the cooler, ready to go. I was back. I done started mushrooms for supper and propped my feet up. And I tell Mark to bring me a light. I text him, tell him, hey, bring the golf cart, bring me a light. I'm down there. My phone's done died. I'm standing in the dark. He's, no, it just fixed. It was fixing to die. And Mark called me just enough time for me to answer, and it died. And I was like, hey, I'm right here down the site and it died yeah and then i he seen me then you know he come down there and he got off the golf cart and hand me a miller light <laughs> he didn't say what kind <laughs> he you. i he said, said where's the light fine pills he said, i thought you wanted a beer did you bring not. a light i brought a light <laughs> <laughs> well i took michael went over to the other place and uh we didn't see i mean you'd already had your sent me a picture of your deer cleaned it in the cooler before we ever saw a deer oh i was propped up and then so the first one we had the first couple come out decent sized doe it was probably it was probably 180, 185 yards. I don't think it's quite 200 over there. I had my phone out. was going to, you know, try to film it. That joker shoots smooth over her back. Did I hit her? And I was like, no, son. He was, smoked that pine tree. Oh, yeah. No, we saw, we went back and fought, went back found and the that. pine tree the next day, and it's got a limb in front of it that it hit and a hole in the tree where the bullet is. Smooth missed it. He was discouraged because he ain't had no luck this year. And I said, well, son, we still got plenty of time. This was, this was probably 430. 4.45. I knew we still had an hour. Sure enough, about 5.35, a couple doe coming well. There was some button heads in there, and they were, but they was right out in front of us. I don't, what, do you, what do y'all think of this over there? 100 yards, 110 straight, yards? Straight across? Yeah. I think it's uh, 125. 
No, straight across. No, it's like uh, maybe 92, 95. It's, it's right, right at 100, right yeah. in there, 100 yards. I knew he could make that shot, and he shot one, but the deer took off, and I was like, damn, that's a gut shot. Mark had already called it, so he, he hit it further back than he should, but me and him sat there and let everything calm down, waited a few more minutes. We still had a little bit of light, and I said, well, we better go see if we can find blood. I knew about where the deer went, but once it got in those pines, it could go. It's, to me, it's harder to track a deer in that green field than it is the pines. Really? You, I don't know if it the dew sits on that green field so much quicker than the yeah. evenings. You can't. It's hard to see blood. To well, me, it is. Well, I got over there, and I found a bunch of blood yeah. in the field. So I was like, well, we got to hit. So I called you, and he's like, come look. And I went ahead and you know, marked what we found. Didn't go push it or anything. But you brought Sadie, the dog, my dog over there. She loves to go find them. She's not been trained, but she just like she's found several for us this she's, year. She's she's tracked she, everyone. <clears throat> she don't bark at all neither though. She just no, goes no. to it. But I don't. I like how she she works because she'll never get out of sight, and she's always going to return to you. So what she do, every time I've worked her, she'll get out there. You get her on the blood. I'll I'll stop her, let her smell, and as soon as she smells it, she knows the ground. She's gone, and she'll go about twenty yards in front of you, and she'll stop. And she'll come back to you, and she'll go twenty yards and come back to you. If she ever does not come back to you, she's at the deer. There's no question about it. See, my lab, Ammo, that's how he's done. He don't bark, but he's found a couple of deer, but he will go, just go to the deer, and yeah, you got to kind of pay attention to where he goes because, I mean, and he, but he will come back. Sadie kind of never gets thing. out of sight, and if she ever does not return to you, like that's what that's what she's done on she three just of them. On, she, she just stopped she on, the on the deer. deer. Yeah. Just and, buy a bell and put on her. Well, yeah, I was yeah, that that's what Jimmy a did. Call her with a light where you can see where she is out yeah. there. <clears throat> A lot of time, I mean, the only thing we did with her, like, I mean, she, she's been to retriever training. She's been to obedience training, so she's okay at that. But, but uh, with the with the deer recovery, I just took some old legs and would have Michael put them on chain and just drag them, and that's the only thing we ever done with her. Just you know, two or three hundred yards and leave it and see if she could find them. She did that a couple she, times, and that's like, well, we'll see. She has the mentality which most labs do that that eager to please mentality, and Sadie is ate up with it. Yeah. Like she wants to do whatever you want her to do, and she's not going to leave your side. And I mean, she works well with me, even though she's y'all's dog. She responds well to just about anybody, yeah, Mikey, listens, Jamie. Yeah, I yeah, mean, she yeah. listens to y'all. She's a she's a, she she's a good dog. She's a real yeah. good dog. But how's Gus doing on his shed? See, that's what I, I I got me one of them shed trainers like you did to start working with her on that. So. Gus is not even supposed to remotely have a care in the world about a shed. Like, he is not the dog for it. But I got a dog, and he covers more ground than I do, so I'm going to work him. And he does very well as far as the retrieving the shed. Um, and I could be wrong about this, but my biggest thing that I've read and researched is that it's not that the dog is technically hunting the shed. The dog's just able to cover more ground than you, and you want that dog to learn to pick that shed up without poking their eye out yeah. and bring it back to you. So if the dog's 30 yards to the right and it's in cover, you can't see, and it finds a shed, it brings it to you. Um, but he's he's done good. And now he found sheds last year. Now, I'm not going to say he's no full-on Labrador hunting dog or nothing like that, but he's a, he enjoys it. I, mean, I think it's a – what I saw read, it was the calcium smell that stays with the shed so long. It's yeah. not actually the, the, the scent, deer scent. scent of yeah. the deer that stays yeah. on the shed. But well, – the, the little training book, and it's, I think it's the dog dog bone yeah. trainer. It's like a little rubber antler, and it comes with its scent stuff, and it says it's like scent of deer, blood, and calcium or whatever. Yeah. Now, the one I got, I can't smell. Like, it doesn't – it really doesn't have a scent. I didn't open it yet, but – The first one I got, I think it – they got <laughs> yeah. the ends mixed up. <laughs> you had the skunk. Man, <laughs> I ain't never smelled them like that. It was horrible. <laughs> That well, Rio I, might be if he don't like guns, he might like shed hunting though. He might, he might. But I mean, the whole thing. Well, so the deal with that was you start with that rubber one because it teaches them how to pick one up without hurting themselves. And you put the sin on it after a couple of weeks of just getting them playing with them with the rubber one. You put the sin on it to give it some kind of deer smell. Then you switch to a hard antler yeah. about the same size. Then you start hiding it, and all they want to do is bring it back to you so they can go back again. That's the yeah. only thing they're doing. It's not. It's not a retrieve so yeah. much as it is. Hey, I found this. Here you want it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not – I think, a, like, I guess when we first started talking about shed hunting and, you know, getting our dogs involved, I always thought, like, these guys that had these shed dogs, like, you turn them out like a rabbit dog and they go they're, find a shed, you know, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's not like that. In no. my opinion, it's not. Yeah. They're, they're just, just – like you said, they're covering more ground. Than they're you covering a cover. hundred times more ground than yeah. you are. And they got a better nose and probably better eyes when it's coming to seeing stuff like that. Now, the – 
the head we found off that deer last year, Gus found it. If it wasn't for him, we never would have found it. Like, he went to it right out the gate. And I guess it still had some meat, so I'm sure it stunk, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he, uh, it's it's something to do. Like, I wouldn't be discouraged if you don't have what they consider a lab or a, a dog that's meant for a retriever dog or get out there and work any of them. I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah. do it with a chihuahua, but, I mean. <laughs> you I can teach take... dogs to do just about anything you yeah. want. Yeah. yeah. So, I've been, it's a Facebook page. It's nothing but sheds. And, man, it's. It's addictive. I mean, I would love to. I'd love to have somewhere to go to, like, really, really find sheds. But they're they're sitting there saying, like, was it the south facing hill is a better place to find sheds? Uh, it's because they lay more on the south and because it's, it's warmer. warmer, facing the sun or yeah. more towards the sun. The north and then it's cool. uh, what else do they say? A cloudy a cloudy day is easier to see them than it is a sunny day, which <clears> seems <throat> backwards to me. We're but. gonna get into that once we get into shed season. We still got two or three more weeks for. Yeah, they should start. Drawing. Yeah, I I'm, I pulled up on my calendar on my phone where I took pictures of the ones we found last year, and it was, it was right around the second week of February we found that first one when me and you were down there, and from there I think the last picture I got was like the second week of March, you know, somewhere around in there. But I still couldn't imagine finding a sixty pound moose shed. I mean, that's <laughs> I don't see how that's hard to find. You like, think that would be easier, don't you? I mean, you're talking about something big as this table, like just there. fly a drone and see them yeah. laying out there. Yeah. You probably don't know what you're looking at just because it's so big. It looks like a log or a yeah. stick or something laying there. I mean, that's what this one guy was saying. He was uh, finding elk sheds. I mean, it was, heck, they were five foot tall. And he's like, you know, it's not as easy to find as what mm-hmm. everybody thinks it is. You know, they they still fall in the snow or they're getting in the leaves. And, you know, you still got to look. So yeah. bef- <laughs> before we jump off in the, in the track and the deer, I will say Michael reminded me a lot of my Uncle Jimmy Friday. Because <laughs> he come that? out of the book and said, I done missed six deer this year and ain't told a word to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's been shooting the woods up and y'all kept it like crickets over there. Hey, mean, all them shells that's in well, the plantation Well, yeah, the, the plantation stand, I did. I picked up all of them I, that was in the floor of the stand. I, granted, I only got one, and that was a coyote. And it was, and I ended up after I sent a picture to you, I found two more. So I think it's either 12 or 13 <laughs> casings have been he's shot. He's been firing down on them. I'm trying to, I'm, I know that I've got. There should have been. It's uh like I had two bucks out of that stand, and I've got two coyotes out of that. I think stand. it's two, one or two, three hundred mags. Yeah. It's my three hundred short mag. It's a couple three oh eights, and maybe one or two six fives, and ought to be one of my twenty eights in there, or two of them. In there. there was one I know. I, might, I don't know. I don't know if and there were some three fifties. Yeah, there's three fifty legends in there. Probably three or four of them. <laughs> That's I don't coyote. know, maybe more. That's that coyote? Coyote shooting. Oh, yeah, that was when I shot a coyote, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because that was three shit. Yeah, that was three times. Yeah, it might be three of them in there, I forget. I, was, I know I shot one of, 308, one of the 308s, two of the 300s, and then, no, three of the 300s, because one of those was in a coyote, too. Dang, it might, I'm, I'm, it might legs. be more casings laying in the floor the I didn't see. I don't police mine. I figured <laughs> you picked yours up, but there's only one nozzle. Uh, I floor. stick mine. My, that one one of in, the 308s is wheels. I forgot about that. He did get yeah, that doe. Yeah. One of them's that the one twenty eight that's in their mind would be Jay shooting that dough. Yeah, we need to put a coffee can or something there. Just <laughs> see how many sacks we can fill it up. No. That one's full, and then <laughs> Trump stand has a lot of them in it. But that's been three years, yeah, three years worth, three or four years worth there. What in the in the plantation? No, no Trump, Trump stand. Oh, yeah. I was going to say I usually clean out them stands. You know, when we go back yeah. through and I'm spraying them with wash. So I usually clean everything out of them, get them out. That way, I know. So it's been shot. fresh. Yeah, it's all fresh. This leads me to the next thing. Last weekend. If Michael, uh, how old is Michael now? 13. 13. Can keep a secret like that. You know Michael and Waylon done shot the woods and oh, they said yeah. to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell, tell me Waylon ain't fired a shot this year. He hadn't. I mean, I hadn't heard him. Now, if we hadn't been there, I don't know. But he says he still ain't shot that new gun. So <laughs> I believe him. I mean, me and Waylon's a He's, like, he's not going to kill it. He just don't. I've never known him to shoot a doe. Ever. Never shoot a doe. We're going to have to do doe training on Jamie and Waylon next year. That's what I was talking to my buddy, and he's like, you know, we hunted together a long time. I think Darren's who it was. And he said, I don't I don't really remember you shooting no does. And, I mean, I've shot a couple running dogs, and I and I think I've killed two at that. I, I bet you I haven't killed ten does in my life. Wow. Shoot. Man, I I've killed year. ten in the last <laughs> yeah. two or three years. <laughs> Not this year, but I have. There's been some years where you can stack them up. Man, that's meat in the freezer. Heck, yeah. I just, I don't know. It's just I it's like therapy it. for me. I'd I love watching it. Yeah. I don't want – man, the buck sucks to eat. I mean, if you talk about <laughs> wanting to get strong, tougher meat, that's the buck. Man, I – That tenderloin, you know, it wasn't as tender, which we got spoiled. 
because we had yeah. some old wonderful duck sitting there comparing it to. But that inner tenderloin, I don't know if it was adrenaline of that deer or just because it went from eating clover to yeah. <laughs> frying pan in about an hour and Man, a half. I, th- I think that's got a lot to do. I think they got more to do with it. that meat. It's just, and I, it ain't no way it had time to relax and come back no. together that quick. It was in my stomach, and it was still going through yeah. uh, <clears throat> Rigor mortis, yeah, rigor rigor mortis, mortis going on. <laughs> so the main thing we were going to talk about today, Mark, was tracking, tracking and, I guess, techniques that we've used or fails or, you know, I mean, wins we, or fails that we've used about tracking, right? I don't want to say that, you know, we don't do a lot of tracking, but we've we've had a lot of young boys from five years old to, you know, grown now that we've all been around and hunted, and a kid's going to make a bad shot at some point or another. I've yeah. done it. Heck, I've done it as an adult. I've done it too. Yeah. I mean. And I don't think if you hunt enough, it's going to happen. And what, so what do you think, what leads to having to track a deer or a long track job on a deer usually? What's, what do you think it is? Sometimes Bad shot nerves, placement, main thing. Yeah. You're just getting all worked up and get, don't focus on what you're doing. Get worked up and, yeah, try either that or trying to stretch a shot further than you need to be. Yeah. Or, what you know, outside take, of your Taking a bad shot, zone, maybe. Yeah. Or, yeah, getting nervous about a, you know, it's getting away, it's getting away, and it's at a bad angle and trying to shoot one. And then I – also, the same thing we talk about is your equipment. And the, one of the biggest deer I shot down in Tunica, I lost. It's because I did not get out there and shoot my gun before yeah. I went hunting. And yeah. it was a faulty scope, and it cost me probably 160, 165 inch deer. I've, I've lost deer over a certain shells, too. Yeah. I mean, so there's all kinds of factors that yeah. can go there's in a lot of bad shots. This doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you're just a bad shot no. or anything. No. Or, I mean, just, there's a lot of factors. That, like, that was what I was wanting to get to. I mean, like Mikey said, I mean, it's all the way down to the, the ammunition you run through your gun. Yeah, I mean, you may shoot a bullet out of your gun that's accurate that you like, and my gun hates it. Yeah, um, yeah. I know. Well, that, we didn't even get into like what happens at bow hunting. Yeah, like I mean, a lot of times you're that's a different. Those that's deer. a different that's world. A different, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's a different monster. And see, there. I think also with, for instance, I went through the same phase what Mike was going through, and I was an adult. Is you missed one deer, you missed two deer, then it, it's Start mentally it's mentally in your head yeah. that, well, I'm just gonna miss it. I don't know why I'm even shooting. Yeah. What helped me most and is here in the last probably, I would say, five years, I've shot every one of my deer rifles more than I ever have. I mean, just like that 350 Legend, ain't no tell how many bullets I've ran through it, and I'm comfortable with it, and I trust it, and I know what it's you know capable of out to 300 yards. I'm not scared to take a shot with it. Same thing with my 28 Nosler, my 260. I mean, I'm comfortable with those guns, and I think a lot of times that, you know, you get in this habit of you go out there November 1st, shoot your rifle two or three times, all right, it's on, it goes back in the gun safe, you go hunting. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, even throughout the year, you loading it the side by side, going back to your truck, getting in our climbing stand, getting our deer stand. It don't take a whole lot to knock one off, or screw bolt or screw or something work loose or whatever. And I think that I mean that's that's one of my things. Like the other day, like I I still got shook up with them does in that field, and but I sit there and I watched them and I got comfortable and you know I watched them through the scope and before I ever even flipped the safety off, I made sure that I was steady because I was shooting from a position I normally. I normally don't shoot off my belly, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's a ton of factors that go into play. And that's one of the biggest things that you can do when you're, like, if, not if you're stretching a shot or nothing like that, but I, I got in the habit of doing this. I noticed that I, the deer that I have missed, it was just a thrown up, you know, oh, that thing ain't 60 yards out you there. You just see, just hair, up, see hair and squeeze the trigger, bam. Yep. And I just flat missed them. Well, I, th- I think we too we get in our mindset, oh, I'm, shooting a, <clears throat> I'm shooting a 300 mag or I'm shooting a 308 or I'm shooting a high caliber gun. You ain't gonna tote it. Yeah. And they that freaking deer will tote yeah. it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll take my time a lot of times. I did that with that doe Friday. I mean, she was across there and it was Malcolm's gun. I've never shot the gun. So, you know, when she came out, it, a bunch of them I did this with, but I would put the gun to my shoulder, put my finger on the trigger, you know, it's on safety, and just track that deer across the field and just hold it where I wanna hit that deer at. So by the time I got ready to take my shot, I kinda got it wasn't back nothing in to there it. and there wasn't nothing to it and just squeezed one off. You know, like when, uh, matter of fact, was it Tunica that day? Me, you, and Thomas, all three was down there. That's that's the first deer that I actually hit and killed after missing numerous deer. And Thomas is right there. He's like, you know, he was. I mean, I felt like a kid, but he was telling me, "Hey, just slow down, hold your breath." You know, he would coach me through it. And after yeah. that, man, I, don't, I mean, I might miss one tomorrow, but as far as that, I've dropped every deer I killed since then. But so once you hit one, let's get back to the tracking part of it. What do we need to do? I think everybody's mistaken. I'm guilty of it. He is. If that deer does not drop on its tracks, you don't – you think you do in your mind, but you don't pay close enough attention where that deer was standing, where that deer went. So if you're hunting in a food plot, where did it go in the woods at? It's very easy to get 
this tree, oh, it went right beside that big oak tree. Well, that big oak tree starts looking like that oak tree 30 yards down, and you're chasing a ghost. You have no (laughs) idea. And it's especially if you're hunting a big food plot, it's real easy to lose track of where that deer went, you know. That, and you get over-anxious. you like, been seeing this deer out in the food plot, seeing this deer come through the woods, and I'm fixing to kill it, and it runs off. I know I hit it, and you immediately go look for it, and it's it's bedded down. It ain't dead, but it's bedded down. How long long should you wait to get down to see if you can just find blood at the point of impact? So where you think it was standing? I think to me it depends on what like Mikey talking about when he shot that doe tails down. You you're pretty confident you hit her. Yeah. So I think it kind of depends on how the deer reacts. But I'm gonna wait at least thirty. See, I'm not. If I'm hunting in the evenings and it's getting close to dark, I want to go out in that food plot, not get in the woods. I want to go find that blood because if you start trying to look at a food plot at night, good luck. Yeah. yeah. One, your hunt's over if it's that close. Yeah. You're not going to sit there and try to get another Don't shot. Don't push it, but go out there and mark where that blood Before is. Before it gets too Before dark, it gets too dark. Blood. And see, that's what I was trying to do Friday, you know, not knowing, wasn't 100% sure. It's like I, I knew which little ridge she went down. I was trying to get over there before it got too dark. I couldn't see with my eyes and had to use the light, you know. And, you know, of course, it was a little bit of blood right there as she went in, so I dropped my hat. Yeah, well, yeah see, I, I keep Kleenex in my pack. And that and stood out I like drop. a sore thumb. When I, drop, when I found blood, I drop a piece of Kleenex, and it, you can ride up on it pitch black dark. As soon as a headlight or a flashlight yeah. sees it, you know where that blood is. There's no doubt about it. And then you did, took it once we found some we found where it went in the woods then. So you marked it there. So we had this we kinda had it. We we're making a line. Right. Let's go to what Friday evening looked like. So you said, All right, y'all shot a deer, you found blood. I finished up Mikey's. Mikey was gonna start on supper. I jumped in the can and brought the dog. Yeah. Come over there. You had it marked in the field where it went in. Um, I basically took Sadie then and we started going to the woods because at that point I was confident because I mean there was Probably a pizza size, pizza pan size blood in the field. I mean, there's plenty. Yeah. Um, there was meat. There was pieces of cartilage and bone. And I mean, it was a, it looked like a very fatal shot. Yeah. You know, um, looking at it, I, I picked it up. And I mean, this sounds dumb, but I smelled of the meat because if it's in the guts, you'll know. I mean, yeah. you'll, you'll be able to tell. Which that one didn't really have a, gut. I didn't at first. I did not think it was a bad shot. I thought he may have hit it a little bit low. I think the deer was angled some. Yeah. I think it was. And, I think he. I thought he hit it just a little low and clipped right there at the brisket bottom of the sternum because that's what it. That's what I feared it was. Yeah. Um, me and Sadie got in the woods and she tracked it. I mean, to a T. Like the, if there was any time that I was not standing on blood, I could watch her and I knew where the next blood was. Yeah. Um, and we got in the woods and it was a good, steady, you know, blood trail. Um, didn't look like the deer had stopped any. And we got about thirty yards in, and I started running into where you tell where that deer was stopped standing. And the deer was stopping standing. About every five yards, you was seeing that, and that's when I was like, "Oh, like, let's just let's just wait," you know. And that was I talked to Mikey about it. That's one of the things is, say you do feel confident in the shot, you know where the deer went in the woods, or you know where it went, you see blood, and you run into that situation. At what point? At what point do you say, "All right, let's go, let's let's back out," you know? Because that's one of the things you could go another five yards and there at deer lays. So that's what's again. hard to get out of your head. You're like, man, if I walk over this next ridge or if yeah. I walk around this next corner in the food plot, he's going to be laying there. And then so I would it. I would say we tracked that deer forty to fifty yards from where he was shot. Maybe yeah. it wasn't real far, and I mean, I felt like we didn't push it, but but it was thick. I mean, it's it was a thick, and thicket. you can't see, and it was dark, so you don't yeah. know how close you were. And my concern was because Sadie was in front of me, you don't know when that dog's going to bump that deer. Yeah. Before I do. I mean, I know that's the case, but you don't, you can't see that, especially at night. So that's when I was like, so I called Sadie off. We went back to camp, waited. You left, the, so you made Michael leave his jacket yeah, so we, we took could find the, the blood in the woods. Took his orange vest off and we hung it on the tree. And then I marked it with my phone. So I marked it both in my just regular Apple Maps, pinned it. And then I went in, I can't remember which app I used, but it was another, like a hunting app. I marked it both because I wanted to see, A, how, they were compared if they were accurate, and it got us right back to it. But we did. We went back to camp and waited about an hour, hour and a half, um, just because we had, it was a figured it was a fatal shot. It was a fatal shot. There was no, there was not a doubt in my mind that we were going to find this animal. Not a doubt. But I wanted to find it as ethically as possible and not have to push that deer and not have to chase it all night. You know, let it lay down. So we backed out, and about an hour and a half, me and Michael, y'all were still cooking supper and stuff, so me and Michael jumped in the side-by-side, carried Sadie again, 
I put her right back on the track from the field because I wanted her to run it all the way back out. She did. And we went 10 yards past where we stopped. Oh, so it was right there. There it laid. I mean, but you couldn't see it. Went, they could have went the other way, too. Yeah. You know? Like, I know for a fact that deer was probably not completely down when we backed out. And if we'd have won another 10 yards, it'd have won another 20, you know. And that's that's what I was telling Mike. He's like, at what point in your mind you feel like you're doing the right thing, but at what point are you think you're thinking too much? You just need to back out, or I'm overthinking it, and the deer's laying right there. You know, you have no you have no way of knowing. Yeah. Generally, with a like a, a rifle, if you you know if you if you hit that body and deer in the body and you got blood, if if you if you go 50 yards and it's dark, I'm saying this, you know, if it was daytime, it's different than it is at night. You know, tracking at night is a hell of a lot harder than it is during the day. If you go 50 yards and you you can stand at that kind of 40, 50 yard mark and kind of look through the woods with the light and don't still don't see the deer, you might want to back out. Yeah, and see that pine thicket, you can't see 10 yards. And it's one of them things like you don't know what's at 40 or 50 yeah. yards. You have no idea. But, I mean, I think we made the right call. I mean, the deer was definitely – we went in there. It was definitely – it's been down for a while. We didn't push it. Uh, what I didn't tell y'all is you get in the pine thickets and nobody's out at the Can-Am at night with no lights on. <laughs> you don't know where you're coming out <laughs> Heck at? no. Man, I drove that deer 200 yards. Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know which way to be lined No, up. I was like, Mike, we'll be coming up on it. He's like, you know where you're going? I said, well, I think I do. And I looked. Heck, we was walking up to Heartbreak. We, yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't know. We had a turn. Uh, well, yeah. you're, looking, you're not looking up yeah. where yeah. you're going. You know, you're looking down at the ground. So it's No all, light. I mean, yeah. it's pitch black dark. There's nothing for reference. At least when the you know, side by side, I should have left it running with the lights on. I point. started to. Yeah. Hindsight. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we I think we made the right call. We recovered the deer. The deer didn't run, I, I would say, maybe 60 yards from where it was shot. Yeah. You know, it wasn't It wasn't it was a hard thick. recovery. It was just thick. And, I Which mean. that's good for the, a new dog, too. Good for the new dog. Going on it. recoveries like that. I honestly, Michael thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, he, I, he was in it. You know, when we went back out there, he was right beside me with that flashlight. He didn't miss a lick. He asked me, is this good blood? You know, he was Trying he was learn. wanting to learn, you yeah. know. And I think that, I mean, I appreciated that. And I told him, I said, man, we done good. I said, you know, I said, I understand you might be discouraged with the shot placement. I was like, but we done what we were supposed to do and we got the animal. Yeah, but he's 13. And when he gets our age, dumb mistakes we make, you know, maybe he won't, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe he'll know better, you know. Yeah. Like, but, and the same thing with carrying a dog. I think it's a good idea regardless if you even see that deer fall dead carry that dog anyway yeah oh yeah we, and I, see, if you're training we it. did mark this I was an early early season though this year you shot one and knew where it fell yeah and then so i said don't go get it don't even go in there let's go get the dog and then put her on it and that deer didn't run 30 yards but she followed the trail she bopped where she was supposed to and went to the deer so that's a that was how i think that's how you probably should start yeah that. and i think too if you have a like sadie's not gonna get She's she's not one to get away from you. She's gonna be within a couple of yards. I of yeah, you. I don't. If she bumped one, I don't think she's gonna chase, chase deer. It. Yeah. And now, if you have a dog that some dogs want to push and run behind. Yeah. The if deer. a dog wants to go, man, get you a twenty foot lead. You know, keep that dog within that twenty or thirty foot of you, and know know where that dog's going. And that's what I would do. Is like, I was tracking the deer, but I was watching Sadie the whole time, and I could tell like if I got to a point where. I wasn't sure like which way that deer go, and I look, and if I see Sadie with her nose on the ground going to the left, most I'm, I trust her. Like that's yeah. where the deer was. And so you're talking about that. That's a different thing. Like, just say you got a a blue tick or a black tan. That's a a running dog. You put that on a blood trail. That dog don't yeah. know to stop. That dog's right. running that deer till it catches it, whether it's your property or two miles down the road. And that's how I think a lot of people lose them doing that. With yeah, they put a, a a hunting dog versus, I guess you say, a tracking dog. Yeah. Like our buddy Miles is, is his brother-in-law, I guess, isn't it? It's got that dog. I don't know how related he is. No, he is ain't a running no, dog. No, it's I say it's a they say it is a it's a beast. Yeah, they say that's not there. Don't, it don't lose a deer. If it loses a deer, a bit, if, uh, if it loses the deer, it's because not. you didn't kill it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's a it's a pit. They say a it. pit. He, they say it. Uh, it's the I, one that's in that video he showed me. That yeah. thing is yeah. a big dog. It's, and it, it held that play. big old buck it, down. It, yeah, and it, will, it don't chase them, but he said if you now, got – Was that a hog dog or was that a – That's what it looks like. Dog. It looks like a hog dog. Yeah. It looks like a jump dog. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want him getting me. No. Oh, now that big old joker is what y'all talking about? <laughs> yeah. That's not who they call, is it? Yeah. You wouldn't have no deer left. That thing got out the one. <laughs> now, my Uncle Jimmy, he had a dog that was – Heinz fifty seven slash lab and he would he would That's catch one and he would let, I mean daddy shot one at it was like five hundred and eighty yards with three oh eight. 
Made a good hit on it, but it ran. Five, what? 480. Oh. Yeah, four, yeah. That's, my, my, yeah. yeah, it's now, Daddy, a long way. Daddy will do some shooting with 308. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, his dog caught it and held it and baited. Yeah. It was, it was a good dog. But that's all. That's how we trained it, is with the, like, 50-foot lead, same yeah. way. Well, you know, some states, you have to keep the dog on the lead. Yeah. yeah. Mississippi, I don't think, is one, but or I, don't, I don't know if it is or not. I didn't check. We was just taking a dog for a we walk. We was just taking a dog for a walk, yeah. yeah. I don't no, know what the rule is, but no, there is some states. I know you do have to yeah. like, keep that dog mm-hmm. on the leash, keeps it from getting on other people's property. Correct. You never know. You know that's deer always do things. That you think you can, you think you know what that deer is going to do after it's hurt, and, and you think you know where it's going to go. And you think you, you know where it's going to go, and it it'll do something that you wouldn't even expect. You know, yeah. and. If oh, they're you, nowhere near got, human when it comes no, to stuff like that. If you're just tracking spot blood, like you're on your hands and knees, here's a little piece, here's a little piece. I've done it. And you're trying to track that deer, and it knows that it's, you know, it's hurt. It, it You'd be surprised what those animals will do. I mean, e- even that doe that I killed Friday, she was running downhill, blood coming out both sides of her, and I was walking through the grass, and all of a sudden she took a 90-degree turn and ran back towards where I was at and went on the next ridge and fell dead. I don't know why she done it. I don't yeah. know why she didn't stay down the hill, going straight down the hill. Yeah, that's unusual because most of the time they don't come back up. No, because we, we went, I mean, it was like. Well, I stopped and I told Mark, I was like, I lost the blood. I don't see it. And I was standing in the, you know, and looking around, and you can just imagine if you was in briars and, you know, neck oh, high yeah. freaking grass or something trying to track that thing or. You know, an old nasty pine thing. Oh, if she was dripping blood, we'd have been there all night. Yeah. You'd have never found it in sage grass. Because, I mean, that sage grass out there is chest high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you almost step on them out there. Yeah. I mean, it's tall. So, I mean, what would you say, going back to with the dogs? I mean, so we know the benefits. You know, dog's got a better nose. The dog is going to basically track that animal. But what are the cons of it? Other than, you know, you can't control if that dog's pushing the deer or not. Yeah. If I say go- pushing's the main. Yeah. The main drawback to a dog. If you, yeah, if it's a, I mean, like Sadie, we don't know what she may or may not do. You know, if she did get up on, just say, a half live deer or That's something. That's what like I was that. wondering. Well, how do you, what how do you, work, how do you train to that? Yeah. How do you call them off? How do they know to jump on it? How do they know to bay them? Is it instinct? And see, like every time I've worked Sadie, I've constantly, know. I'm steadily talking to her. Sadie, Sadie, you know, just, and keeping her reacting with you to where she does stay yeah. within talking distance. You know, she's not just, on it running wild right well she's e collar condition too so yeah you can call her back she knows to come back if you, if you just tone her oh she was so discouraged when i pulled her off oh yeah she don't want to come off no she don't want to come out of a duck blind and then <laughs> if you ain't shooting ducks <laughs> it just drives her crazy i got tickled we got back out there and i told michael i was like she's mad at us he's like what do you mean i was like heck she's done done this once like she, she yeah i done tracked this butcher at once why you bring me back you know y'all keep on and we're gonna the duck dog is going to get out of her because our, our killing ducks versus killing a, a shot at a duck versus a shot at a deer. Yeah. It's, it's off with the ducks for sure. The bad thing is, is she, she ain't made it on the like really good duck hunts yet. Uh-uh. Well, we didn't even talk about our duck hunt. Well, that's, we're going to get to that before we talk about cooking those ducks. But the I next. Mean, so as far as tracking, had you rather have the dog or did you rather just get a flashlight and go out there and try to find I'd rather have a dog. I think it. I think if it increases your. It speeds up the recovery and increases your chances of finding that deer. If it's to the point to where you're having to, like Mikey said, you're chasing droplets of blood. Give me that dog. Yeah. You know, and you you gave the deer time. You yeah. know, I'm not going to throw a dog on it 20 minutes after we shoot it. You know, I wouldn't. That yeah, that's a that that would be the that's wrong a pusher thing to do. for sure. Yeah, I would like to. In a perfect world, I would you know give it an hour, go see what you got. If you feel confident and you got a good blood trail, it's daylight hours. You're not pushing, you know, you're not rushing because of dark. Stay on it. You know, you might find it on your own or whatever if it's good. But then if you start struggling, that's when the dog needs to come in. Yeah. yeah. If you get to where you can't find right. blood, it's gone too far or something, go back out. That's yeah. Because, I, I mean, I know. Time moves a lot faster when your adrenaline's pumping. Yeah. Like in your head. You well, know, you cover what you ground. think is 30 minutes really wasn't about five. Yeah. You know, so you – you know, you want to get down, you want to touch it, you want to put your hands on it, you know, especially if it's a big deer, you know, and, and you you start getting anxious and then then you mess up. Oh, and that's the thing now. I mean, I, I mean, you got your phone, look down at your phone, set your time, 
where your deer went in, get your phone and turn around and take a picture yeah, of that that's food a good plot, idea. that tree, whatever that you've yeah. seen that deer go by. And just that's right. like say your mind's running so many different directions. And it's hard to watch up. that deer. If you're thinking about that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Like if from you're, the stand. Yeah. Because it looks so different. Like once you when get, you get on, on the ground yeah. versus what it did in the stand. And I think a lot of people make a mistake, you know, trying to jack another shell, take their eyes off the deer too. Yeah. Instead of like washing it out. You know, go off the field. Right. You know, trying to jack another shell, looking you at the gun, and I mean, trying chances to, of getting that other shot. Yeah, you know, unless that deer stops. Now you, you know, especially it's multiple deer, like with Michael yeah. last year. You know, you take your eyes off the deer. Now you got twenty deer out there, and now which one did I just yeah. shoot? Yeah, if yeah. it ain't got horns on it, that's right. No, there's. I think I like the idea of taking a picture, but it's that's the. I would say that's one of the hardest things if you're hunting by yourself. You don't. You have to be the one to watch that deer go off the field. Not not your buddy sitting beside you, you know, or nothing like that. It's all up to you, and it's it ain't as easy as it sounds. No. I try to get Michael to stay on the scope and on the deer, but I know it does look different, so I don't know what's the right, you know, should you raise up off the scope and watch the deer with your eyes? I raise up should off you, the scope. Yeah. But I don't think you need to get in the habit like Jamie was talking that, about. That was, you, my, that was my deal with missing up, deer. You know? I shot and knew that deer was supposed to fall. And I was looking and I was dropping my gun. Follow through with that shot, you know, and then watch the deer. So, kind of backtracking a minute. On Michael, and I don't know if they still make it, Leopold made a scope that it was a red dot, and the dot only turned red, if I remember right, when you got your crosshairs focused and it was staying still. So, it would make you, like Michael talking about, just throw up and get hair in the scope you're not gonna it's not gonna do that yeah. so it would help you train your eye to focus on that red dot versus the scope like it had a sure target or whatever. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure they they used to make one I still that. do or not. that's pretty cool though have you ever done any of those what was it the lights they used to have they're supposed to make blood yeah. shine it's almost like a blood tracker. infrared looking light. Yeah. yeah they make a blood tracker light you ever used one of those i never have uh no I've some, Primos had one. Somebody there yeah. was several different people that had those. Yeah, it's it's time. like a it does that blue light? It. Illum- yeah. yeah, yeah, like crime scene type light, mm-hmm. right? It's I a mean, black light, I guess. Isn't it? Much. Yeah, it's got some kind of lens on it that <laughs> illuminates that blood a little. Do bit. Do you have to spray the stuff? Or I don't think no. So. I think it's just like yeah. a kind of like the it shows you the difference of it. So that rolls right into what other options you got. That's my. Well, that's what I'm ready for. <laughs> if you don't have the dog, this is what I want. What's that? Drone. I want the infrared drone. Oh, the infrared drone. Like, yeah, yeah. If you, anybody has not watched that on YouTube, that guy's. Oh, yeah. Deer, drone deer recovery? Yes. that's. I've been blown. I mean, I watch every one that comes out. Since There's the, another one, too. I think it's called yeah. Aer- Aerial Deer yeah, Recovery yeah. or something like that. Y'all tag yeah. him in his podcast. I didn't send him a message. We, we're you? waiting. Hey, we wanna, I want to get him on the podcast yep. and talk about drone deer recovery. And what it takes to do all it. the other benefits you can do with the drone with the infrared yeah. it's crazy. Well, you know, he was doing that uh herd survey. Herd well. yeah. There's another guy in Mississippi doing that. I, 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 he, I think, was he the one that YouTube video? Yeah, and what he's done, they're selling uh, deer pro- or hunting properties. I don't know where he's at. I think it's like <clears> South, I, I saw that Louisiana, YouTube. South Mississippi somewhere, but he also does herd analysis with his, and uh, it looked pretty cool too. I seen a guy doing that, I mean, and he was doing everything from. Uh, he was checking cattle for a guy on a big ranch. Yeah, yeah. you know, just from keeping sending, spending so much time, he sent that drone out, and boom, well, here's all your yeah. cattle here. Here's a here's a stray I mean, over. You know here. how much gas that's saving just to yeah. be able to fly oh, out yeah. there. I mean, you don't have to ride out there and physically check them. Think about what that real estate agent, the sales for his property. If he's yeah. able to give him an analysis with yeah. the property, like there's forty have, bucks here yeah, above one forty right. bucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All of a sudden that price goes up, don't yeah. it? Or it does that land on it. Y'all better get out there and kill them bucks for y'all yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how y'all got a lease. I don't know if I like that on a real estate yeah, agent side of things. I don't, I don't either. Price just went up. <laughs> no, what? you'd have to show me before I got that contract signed. That'd be in the last stipulation, yeah. you know. I don't know you exactly what how drone. Many bucks is on here for us to sign that piece of property. I don't know exactly what drone he uses, but I want that thing probably around twenty it's to twenty five thousand. Probably it's a, it's a DJI. DJI. Look, the drone itself. I looked it was like fifteen, but then the cameras are another ten. But it's a two hundred power. Magnification camera. That I mean, it's There's two cameras on it. Mm-hmm. That dude. That, one of them's the drone camera, and then one of them's the thermal. That's, I'm telling it's you, that's, that's why I want. I want one so bad. I'm gonna let y'all have that. I'd, I'd be tech. the one to crash it right in the side of the truck as soon as <laughs> yeah, it took yeah. off and just fifteen thousand dollars gone. <laughs> oh, dude, crashed his. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he had to take. He thought something shot it out of the sky, but something about 
one of the cameramen the camera fell off yeah. and hit and the, hit the, the propeller, propeller and wrecked it. I don't know. How, he didn't say how much damage it did. But. I, I can barely send an email, and I'm wanting a $25,000 yeah, drone, drone to fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get you a helicopter, Jamie, and you get a monocular. Yeah. You, just fly around. you just ride in a helicopter. I don't know if you get one of them Dukes of Hazard little propeller things where you, <laughs> what do you call them, gliders? Oh, the yeah. gliders. With a more motor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want one of them. You can fly around in that. Paramotor. Yeah, then you can look with your binocular. Yeah. See what you got, Mark. I hope, I hope it rather that drone crashed and Jamie crashed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> be the cheaper version. You could probably get one of them less than 15. <laughs> ultra, or the ultralight one. Yeah, it's an ultralight yeah. thing. Well, I'm going to tell y'all what. Teal is some of the best duck I have ever <laughs> ate. I don't know. We jump in subjects here, but we went on a, a hunt with our buddy BJ. Uh, we're, uh, y'all, y'all know more about that land. Just, yeah, I grew up. I grew up. Yeah, I grew up down there as a kid. but It's a uh, flooded timber. Really, it's no, it's just flooded timber. They probably, I don't know how many, we need to find out how many years they flooded that because that's a lot, a lot of it right there. But I, I want to say it probably 400 something acres, if I remember right, maybe. I think so, something like that. We used to rabbit hunt it a bunch and we'd go in to the Coldwater River fishing as a kid. My dad had permission and we, I mean, we so, hunted, we hunted and fished down there. Well, a lot. they don't have green heads. No, if anybody says, do you want to go on a wood duck shoot? You say yes. I agree. I had, I, you know, that, like an official wood duck hunt, I mean, I've, you know, we've snuck out there news and what yeah. those were and try to kill them as they come in, and it's always fast. You know, you either shoot them when they all come in, and it's over. Well, this, he had, they had it set up. They yeah. flooded the timber, it had a blind set up. Uh, y'all got, y'all went down and just kind of hunted in the, you know, yeah. in the woods. We freaking went on a hike. That's the only thing. We were not real clarified on direction to go. He just go down here and when go it opens up, take a right. I was yeah. like, I told Jamie, I was like, Dang, go. We're gonna be on the river in a minute, like. <laughs> Me and Mikey went and got the blind. We didn't wade too far with 30 no. yards at the yeah. most. No, 150, 200 yards and knee, knee, knee deep to waist deep water in mud. Uh, shot shell, a bag of shotgun shells and a gun. And yeah, it gets. Yeah. Mikey exercise. brought one box of shells. He told me, I said, do we need to bring a case? Now, I didn't, I've never been on a wood duck hunt. Do we need to bring case shells? Y'all probably he said, shot no, a case. one box would be enough. So I brought one box of shells. You couldn't even see good. Malcolm was bumming shells. <laughs> <laughs> hey, them juggers start whistling in there, man. I'm shooting because the way it's set up where we were, it's like woods and then a clearing is probably, what, 50 yards wide maybe? Yeah. Was it that far? Maybe. It probably ain't that. Maybe. probably 30. Maybe 30, 30 or 40. 30 and then more woods. And there was like a lane. And they the juggers would hit that one end and buzz down it like it's a runway. You better oh. be on them, man. When it when that when it comes shooting like, cause we was looking, and then you know we had like two minutes and some people on the neighboring property are a little ways off. We yeah, their clock boom, was boom, off, boom, wasn't boom. It? Yeah, they shot they about a minute shooting. early. I said, yeah. well. And we'd already kind of held up because ducks had already hit the water in oh, front yeah. of us was sitting there. I oh, mean, Mikey was it. We was like saying, ready to go. He was like, let's shoot, let's shoot, can we shoot them on the water? He, like, he said, he didn't want us to shoot them on the water. Yeah, BJ told us, ah, we ain't going to shoot them on the water. It ain't very sportsman to shoot one on the water. We did. Now, <laughs> with the he shoot, got out of the blind and had his the, back yeah, turned. Yeah. there's a, So some teal came in, and that's and one of them landed. It wasn't, I don't know, it was probably 60 yards. It was them. down there. It was down there, and I looked at Mikey. That duck was on the water, and I couldn't stand it. I said, Mikey, you think I can shoot it? And he said, uh. I said, bam! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dirt rolled that one. Well, me and, and Mike- Mikey went and got it. That BJ came back out. He's like, y'all get one way down there, didn't you? I said, yeah, I might have got that one. That was a good shot. <laughs> but we ended up killing. Y'all killed a teal, too. Yeah, we killed Mark a teal. Did, yeah. That's the first. I don't think he said they hadn't killed any teal this year. It, it was several that come through yeah. early on. Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard to judge. You can. They're hard to judge in that that kind of atmosphere because a you're not seeing a lot of like skyline. Because I mean, when they're on you, they're on. Yeah, you. they're coming in. Yeah, you can judge teal. You know, I mean, they're small duck, but man, that rascal where me and Jamie was at, it was like a T in the road. So we had the road going to the big opening. Y'all were sitting on. And they were coming down the road behind us, and man, they was like on drift track. When they come around that corner, I mean, you heard their tire squeal. They yeah. were rolling. I'm gonna tell you, teal is the filet mignon of the sky. <laughs> it is. If, good. if Sandhill Crane is the ribeye, teal is the <laughs> filet mignon because it was so tender. Good. It melt in your mouth. The texture on it was unbelievable. And a wood duck, man, that's a fine eating duck. duck yeah, too. wood duck does eat. So good. I had that down. You know, we talked about cooking a duck. We had a feast Friday night. We did. So with all the deer killing, so we ended up killing. Three does Friday, and we had a feast. We cooked had the inner loins out of your your cooked dough. the inner loins out of mine. How'd you you marin? What'd you do to it? I done like an olive oil and chimichurri marinade, just something easy, simple. Um, 
I was kind of just wanting to have a different flavor. I mean, we cooked no roll ups. Yeah, no roll ups. I'm anti tired of roll ups. They're good, but I'm just tired of them. Yeah. And we learned that with duck. We were cooking ducks. We were taking all this time with the cream cheese and peppers and pre cooked the bacon. And I prefer to have that animal. It's natural. Just, just plain meat. Man, you probably know, some of the best duck I had was it was wood duck and mallards, it was greenheads, but it was kebabs. Man, they were so good. So that's Jamie didn't get to try this, but we or Mikey plucked some of them and breasted them out with skin on. What was your favorite, skin on or skin off? Uh, I'm gonna say skin off because we cooked those on the grill. Yeah. Now, if you'd have cooked that skin on and then finished it on the grill to give it that, because I like that grill flavor. Yeah. The skin on texture was awesome. It was a little crunchy, but it was missing that grill flavor yeah. that those other duck breasts have. Well, I mean, what, I, what did y'all think? I liked them both. I mean, yeah. I, I like the skin for that little bit of fat. Yeah. You know, you do get a little bit more flavor, and it's kind of, it's not a gamey flavor, but it's, no. a, it's a duck, you know, flavor. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I agree. The, the That grill, I don't know, grilled deer, grilled duck, I mean, it's it to me, it's always, you know, even the steaks is better than, you know, being in a cast iron skillet or something. Now, when like I say that. we grilled these ducks, you scared them with some fire. They were not on their lawn. <laughs> no. Well, no. Wade, they've been out there for 20 minutes with a leaf blower getting the fire hot. <laughs> it was hot. No. How long did you cook them on the grill? Man. It, minute aside? If that. Two if minutes that, total? If that. Two minutes total. Yeah. And they were perfect. I and mean, I'll you still you, want them. You want them rare to medium rare. It and took, when you slice them, they just melt in your mouth. We noticed this and – we didn't notice this at the same time. Mikey was outside on the grill cooking. I was in the house, and I was searing them in a skillet, the ones with the skin on. And we both got done about the same time. And me and him looked at it. I said, man, these things, we tempt them a little bit. It took, you know, they took forever to get to 100. Well, shoot, yeah. once they hit to 100, about another five seconds. I mean, they were, they were there. You better, be, yeah. you better be checking them. Yeah. It don't take long. I just think you don't want to overcook them. No. That's, That's what kills the flavor of any wild game. Yeah. And that's probably where a lot of people may be messing up with them too. You know, they get to that hundred mark, they're probing them or whatever. Oh, I still got five minutes. Still, yeah. Well, let me yeah. go in here and use yeah. the bathroom real quick, and I'll come back. And then by that time, it's one, overshot it, your. You yeah. nuked them. Yeah, you got to have a hot grill, and you got to do it fast. That's yeah. the. There's no. Don't try to low and slow them. You, you're wasting your time to get them seared and get them off. Yeah, and we seasoned them simple. I mean, really. What you put on them? Just prime beef. That was it. Yeah. I don't know if that ain't a better freaking wild game rub than it is beef. It's fine on duck and, and deer. I know that. Anything red meat, it is to die for. We also did uh, some oven roasted potatoes that Mikey did. What, you did the old uh, quarter, quartered up some Yukons. Yeah, quartered up some Yukons. And, that ain't what I'm excited about. We did some uh, wild rice. Wild homemade rice. wild rice. Yeah, homemade right out of the box. Rice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Made the box. Oh, oh, Uncle Ben's wild rice. That was Adderance. <laughs> So what was this king cake y'all made? So then me and Mikey been talking. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's Mardi Gras time. King cakes are a thing. We see them in the grocery stores here in Mississippi. But a lot of people, you know, if you're from Louisiana, probably got bakeries that make them and sell them. Well, the king cake's like a dessert. It's sweet. It's glazed up, whatever, with the different colored icings. We wanted to do a savory one. And some places do them. I don't know if you can go to like a grocery store and buy them. But you got to go to a specialty bakery probably in Louisiana. Yeah. But it's a boudin stuffed king cake, so it's a savory one. So we got the idea. <coughs> so we got the idea to do our own version of it. You, what we use crescent rolls, crescent rolls, some boudin. We got at Walmart. We didn't have you know any special. We're not in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're making we're do. North Mississippi. We carry they but, carry Zumos up here. Yeah, most. Zumos. And it's we, pretty good. Uh, though. Yeah, it's good. Oh yeah, it's, it was real good. Bought a couple, uh, two pounds of Louisiana crawfish tails out of the fr- freezer section at Walmart. Yeah. Then uh, we did. I did a little Trinity, pepper, onion, celery, sauteed that up, threw the crawfish tails in there, hit it with some Cajun seasoning, got that good and hot, and separated it. Half of it went in a block of cream cheese, but really it took a little more than a block of cream cheese. Yeah, Probably it made two about blocks. two blocks to make get that consistency right. Yeah, to get it because you want it thick, you don't want it runny. Because what we're gonna do is we we took these crescent rolls and we had a couple cans of the just Pillsbury crescent rolls, yeah. little triangles laid them around on a baking sheet, kind of made like a semi circle. Yeah. And just right next to each other. 
You warm, uh, you took the boudin. Warm, I took the casing off the boudin, uh, stuck them on a plate, warmed them up for two minutes in the microwave just to get them where they were, you know, not so firm. Yeah, pliable a little yeah. bit. Because they're, they're really, boudin's fully cooked. Yeah, it Most is. Most people throw it on a grill or smoker just to warm it up. You put the cream cheese mixture with the crawfish, the seasonings, the trinity, spread that kind of in the middle of the crescent rolls. Yeah. Put a link of boudin and then wrapped it up. Yep. Then it went in the baking sheet. In the oven, was it 350 for 350. 35, 45 minutes? Yeah, until we seen the top of the crescent roll starting to turn yeah. a little well, while, brown. Go while that was baking, I took that remainder Trinity and crawfish mixture I made and dumped a thing of white cheese, white queso <laughs> in there in the pan, just kind of <laughs> brought it just to melt just enough to heat it up and then turn the heat off, and then we seasoned it a couple times. Yeah. Mikey threw some stuff in it. I threw some stuff in it. So it made this crawfish cheese sauce. When we took that out of the oven, the boudin cake, after it had done, boudin king cake, after it had done got brown, you sliced it into how big ever chunk you wanted of it and then ladled you <laughs> some of that crawfish cheese dip over it. And then you had brought some uh, pork rinds you picked up at the yeah. gas station. I took that rest of the bag and just smashed <laughs> them up, sprinkled that crunchiness over the top of it, and then hit it with some green onions. Shoot. You talk about good. fire. It was real good. I'm doing a recipe on it on my on my on my YouTube channel this week. I mean, that's going. I mean, it was that good. That was just an it was, experiment. Yeah, it, yeah. We we've been watching a few videos and researching, just seeing you know what was out there and stuff yeah. like that, and kind of getting ideas. And everybody does it different, but we stepped it up a little bit. It worked, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, so we ate duck, we ate deer tenderloin. This was at nine thirty at night, rice, ten o'clock. <laughs> and then king cake, boudin king cake, I guess was our dessert. I mean, Waylon we was, made we was eating like oh eight sheets ham, of ham and cheese sliders. Little ham and cheese sliders. <laughs> uh, y'all y'all eating all this up, and I got my fifteen year old daughter at home doing a taco bar for her Friday night. <laughs> Is that what you were doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that was that was a great. We got one more weekend. I don't know if we're gonna top it this week. So that's what I was gonna bring up before we get off here. What is the plan for the final weekend? I man, I'm really thinking gumbo. I don't know why. I think it's Mardi Gras. To, you know, let's. Normally we go to the steakhouse, opening weekend, closing weekend. We can, but man, for some reason I'm thinking gumbo. What do y'all I'm, think? I'm debating. We could do gumbo, jumbo, gumbo, jumbo, jumbo. Jumbo sounds pretty good. Gumbo, man, how would that be? Jumbo. I don't gumbo know. Gumbo over it. You know, you Christmas. Gumbo with rice. You ever done it? Yeah. English daddy made gumbo. Rice and gumbo. Yeah. You English daddy it? made a duck gumbo at Christmas, and I made dirty rice with, like, pork sausage. Yeah. And done the gumbo over that, and it was real good. I don't know why you wouldn't eat jump, jambalaya and gumbo together. Yeah. Sounds pretty darn good. It's pretty good. I don't know. We're going to do something like that this weekend. We got one more weekend. I'd like to kill some more ducks. I mean, we got Monday and Tuesday, too, yeah. so... If the boss will let us off, we may do no call, no shows on Monday, Tuesday. Well, it's put a pretty tight schedule. Yeah, I mean, that schedule might have to pause. I think I feel a little bit of Rona coming home. Some I don't know about y'all. Yeah, I got the coughs. The Rona, got the guy, I got the, they got bird flu. Yeah. I, got. I think got the bird flu. I'm about well, to stay down the camp. If we get it at camp and everybody at camp quarantine. gets it, everybody's quarantined yeah, at camp, that's right. right? That's right. Hey, man, I'm good. You can take that old. Fever the mom and rub it on your blue jeans. We can get a fever. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just take a picture of you laying back sick. Yeah. In the shell like he's down. <laughs> We're all contaminated. No, see, yeah. we got to be careful doing that with Malcolm. You know, he's, <laughs> he might accidentally think he's actually he got really it. Got I'll got convince it. myself. Yeah. I, can, yeah. I can't play sick. It's yeah. like, if I do, it'll get on me. We'll wake he's up. So, he's gone home. Yeah. <laughs> Malcolm's so good, he fools his own self. <laughs> can't do it. Well, I guess that's about it. Yeah, man. Tell them where, hey, tell them where they can get them hats that y'all got on, the hoodies and stuff. Y'all go check out buckjunkies.com. <laughs> um, check it out. We got some hats, hoodies, these pullovers. Mikey's sporting one of the new T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. T-shirts. You know, we're just trying to get it out there. So, you know, check it out. Let us know if y'all got some ideas as far as apparel y'all want to see. Hey, we got to buy some more bullets. We need some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. It's the end of the season. We're Sportus. out. We're out. <laughs> uh, we just shot some steel shot. Everybody has. <laughs> But y'all make sure to check these podcasts out. We got a ton of them out there on all the platforms. We're finna start hitting some more YouTube videos, some long form and short. So if y'all got anything y'all want to see, let us know. And if y'all got questions, let us know. We'll be glad to help you out. Otherwise, what we got? Hey, we gone.